with all of my videos about big bore cartridges and shotguns, I believe the time has come for me to talk about a cartridge that I frequently use for small game. It's time to introduce you to my favorite rimfire and small game cartridge, the venerable 22 WMR, affectionately known as the 22 Mag. Ammo for the 22 Magnum isn't nearly as cheap as the 22 long rifle and it doesn't really shoot as flat as the 17 HMR but the 22 Magnum's versatility and downrange punch make it the perfect rimfire for hunting in my opinion. I've taken countless squirrels, rabbits, foxes, skunks, possums, you know and even a few coyotes with the 22 mag. You know, I've used the 22 Magnum for everything from putting meat on the table to protecting my flock of chickens. This video is going to discuss the 22 Magnum in the context of hunting. You know, we won't be discussing target or competition shooting in this video. You know, although the although accuracy and precision are important, we'll be talking about using this cartridge to kill animals not to make little tiny groups on paper. You know, uh, this video will give you my objective, although slightly biased opinion, of the 22 Winchester Magnum Rimfire cartridge. So sit back, relax, and enjoy my take on the 22 Magnum. The 22 Winchester Magnum Rimfire cartridge was released to the public by Winchester in 1959. It was an instant hit, and within the first two years of production, Marlin, Smith & Wesson, Ruger, Winchester, and Savage already had firearms chambered for it. The 22 WMR is an enlarged 22 WRF case with a 224 diameter bullet. The first loads were designed to launch a 40 grain bullet at 1,875 feet per second. It hits with well over twice the energy of a 22 long rifle and shoots relatively flat for twice the distance. Farmers and ranchers that needed to keep pests away from crops and livestock and chickens were the first to really embrace the 22 Magnum. It killed better than the 22 long rifle out to longer distances and did it with what seems like the same level of recoil and muzzle blast. Increased powder capacity isn't the only reason the 22 Magnum has such a performance advantage over the 22 long rifle. Winchester designed the cartridge to use newer, slower burning powders in order to take advantage of use in longer barreled rifles. As fast as it became a hit in the United States, it also found favor internationally. It's been used extensively around the world when something quiet and easy to shoot was needed to take care of varmints and pests around the land. Even though it wasn't initially designed for handguns, the 22 Mag later became a favorite cartridge for small concealable self-defense revolvers and pistols. I'm a huge fan of all of the popular rimfire cartridges. You know, the. Uh, uh, the 22 WMR, the 17 HMR, and the uh, 22 long rifle. But uh, to me, the seven cartridges like the 17 Super Mag and the 22 Hornet rounds don't appeal to me at all. You know, because they're just way too much for rabbits and squirrels. And the ammo is very expensive and hard to get. And let's be honest, you're better off using a 223 than your 22 Hornet anyways. So here's a chart comparing the three practical rimfire cartridges for hunting. And you could clearly see the strengths and weaknesses of all three in this chart. Notice that I didn't add recoil numbers like I usually do in uh, my charts because I don't feel that you're going to feel any recoil in any of these. So recoil energy is a useless number for these cartridges, in my opinion, because you're not going to really feel recoil in any of them. The uh, 
22 long rifle obviously lacks the uh, energy and trajectory of uh, the 17 HMR and the 22 mag, but it the tw the 22 long rifle is literally the cheapest cartridge in the world to shoot. And if you just love high volume plinking like any red blooded American does, then uh, you know having a 22 long rifle in your collection is pretty much mandatory. This is also the perfect starter rifle for any child's first hunting experience. And to tell you the truth, it's actually great for squirrels. But from an ethical hunter standpoint, the 22 long rifle is best used for smaller game like squirrels and rabbits. And it's best used at 50 yards and in, in my opinion. Now the 17 HMR is a fantastic flat shooting, accurate little cartridge. You know, even though it's uh, a significant downgrade in energy from the 22 Magnum, it shoots flatter and bucks wind better within its useful range, making it the best rimfire for serious target shooting, in my opinion. You know, I've shot amazing groups with my uh, little 17 HMR, even at 200 yards. But, uh, I'd never shoot anything larger than maybe a fox or a raccoon with this cartridge because it really does lack downrange energy. You know, uh, I don't even think I'd hunt coyotes with this, to tell you the truth. Now, the 22 Magnum was designed from the start to be a cheap small game cartridge with almost no noticeable recoil. You know, it retains... It retains much more energy, you know, uh, than the 17 HMR within ethical hunting distances and, you know, way more energy, of course, than the 22 long rifle, you know, uh, and the lower velocity, I think, and higher mass of the bullets normally gives great penetration rather than the bullets exploding on impact like a lot of the 17s do. You know, as a pure small game rimfire hunting cartridge, I think the uh, 22 Magnum is about as perfect as it gets. Although the 22 Magnum is probably the best small game hunting rimfire ever produced, it does have one glaring weakness, in my opinion. You know, making semi autos chambered for the 22 Mag is problematic. You know, the 22 Magnum semi autos range from really finicky with ammo to completely unreliable to flat out dangerous to use. The 22 Magnum cartridge is right in the middle of no man's land for a classic blowback system, a delayed blowback system, and a gas system. The cartridge is almost too long for a classic blowback system to operate properly, but pressure is also too low for a gas system. You know, with a blowback system, the bolt isn't really locked into the chamber. The bullet needs to physically leave the barrel before the case fully exits the chamber. And if this doesn't occur, the case will blow out and you'll have a mini explosion in the gun with an open chamber, which isn't a safe situation. And the problem isn't higher pressure like many uninformed gun experts claim. Actually, the 22 Magnum runs at the exact same pressure as the 22 Long Rifle. That's right, both the 22 Magnum and the 22 Long Rifle average about 24,000 psi of pressure. The problem is the pressure duration and the cartridge length of the 22 Magnum. The pressure peak of the 22 Magnum is longer, so the case needs to be sword, uh, needs to be supported a little bit longer so you don't end up with a blowout. But this causes another problem. If you stiffen up the spring or you add weight to the bolt to delay cycling, 
this long case might not clear the chamber and eject properly. So then instead of a dangerous situation, you have reliability issues. So making a semi-auto 22 mag or 17 HMR is a balancing act between keeping the case in the chamber longer and reliably ejecting spent cases with a small powder charge. Companies have been claiming for decades that they solved the 22 mag and 17 HMR semi-auto puzzle. You know, they aver you know, a lot of them added hybrid delayed blowback systems and played with spring and bolt weights, but in the end, none of them are 100%. Ruger, Remington, and many others gave up on making 22 Magnum and 17 HMR semi-autos after many blown up guns and lawsuits from that. You know, in fact, the most dangerous gun that I've ever owned was a Alexander Arms 17 HMR upper. I mean, that thing would blow cases like crazy. And my buddy has a Magnum Research 22 Magnum right now that'll blow cases on any ammunition that isn't a 40 grain CCI. And some companies even made their modified blowback design to favor safety over cycling, like the A22 and the A17. But those guns are extremely ammo sensitive and jam a lot. Uh, here's some YouTube video footage of uh, A22 jamming a lot, which a lot of them seem to do. <laughs> companies modified their blowback systems to favor reliably cycling like the Keltec and the CZ512. Here's some video of dangerous blowouts with those guns. Another issue with rimfire ammunition in general is that in order for the priming compound to ignite, rimfire cases are made of very thin, soft material. Because of this, rimfire cases are very prone to blowing out or splitting if they aren't fully supported in the chamber, which is another reason why semi-autos aren't really a great idea with uh, 22 Magnum rimfires. Out of every 22 Magnum semi-auto ever made, I personally think that the CZ-512 is probably the best of the bunch. But as you saw in this segment of the video, even those can have issues. So when it comes to rimfire Magnums, uh, particularly the, uh, the 22 Mag and the 17 HMR, I stick to bolt action rifle these, you know, I stick to bolt action rifles only for these, you know. If you like lever guns, though, uh, Henry Lever Action and 22 Mag is also an awesome combo. I absolutely love 
almost all the bolt action rifles chambered for 22 Magnum. You know, you also don't need to spend a lot of money to get a great sub MOA rifle in 22 Magnum. There's super cheap rifles like Rossi and some of the Keystone rifles like the Keystone Cricket that work okay. You know, the, there's rifles like the Savage 93. That's a great little gun for under $300. And there's other good options in that price range as well, I believe. Um, you could step up to the Ruger American Rimfire for about $350, which is also a really decent rifle. Or you could step up the level of quality to the CZ 457 American for just under $500 or the Browning T-Bolt for just under $700 if you want to spend some more. You know, to tell you the truth, I really wouldn't pay more for that than that for, uh, you know, a, a 22 rimfire hunting rifle. You know, some of those Euro those fancy European rimfires just aren't worth the money for a hard-use hunting rifle, in my opinion. Honestly, I think that even the Browning T-Bolt is really overpriced for what you get. And in addition to bolt guns and lever actions, I'm also fond of some of the single shot uh, rifles chambered in uh, 22 Magnum, particularly my old Savage Model 24S. You know, this thing with the uh, 22 mag barrel on top and the 20 gauge barrel below, man, I've walked around my property in Arizona and uh, I've uh, put lots of dinners on the table with this old thing. And... I've even used it this past year. Who knows, maybe I'll do a video on this gun. I like it so much, but uh, you have, actually have a lot of options for a reliable gun in 22 Magnum. Like the 17 HMR, the 22 Magnum is famous for being a very accurate cartridge, but its real utility comes in its versatility. 22 WMR comes in a wide variety of ammunition choices. You know, you could get 25, 30, 33, 35, 40, 45, 46, and 50 grain projectiles for the 22 Magnum. In addition to this, you could get shot shells for snakes. You can get shot shells for rats and even hunt with lead free ammo like we need to do in California. Like with any rifle, different rimfire fire barrels tend to like different types of ammunition. So it's best to uh, test out several types of ammunition to see what your barrel likes the best. Unlike the 22 long rifle cartridge that I usually zero out at 50 yards, I like to zero my 22 Magnum rifles at longer distances. You know, even though we won't be shooting much past 100 yards, with the 22 Magnum bullets, because they really start falling and drifting fast out past that distance, the 22 Mag can shoot relatively flat from the muzzle out to about 125 yards. The key here for hunters is that we'll be shooting very small targets, you know, uh, the head or vitals of a squirrel or a cottontail are actually very small. So I set up my zero for a maximum point blank range with this in mind. Also, a very mild 10 mile an hour breeze is gonna move the bullet almost five inches off the target at 100 yards. So I try to hunt with the 22 Magnum at about 100 yards and in, you know, preferably well under 100 yards if I can, because wind drift is just so bad at or past 100 yards. I personally like a 90 yard zero with my uh, 40 grain CCI gain points and with my um, 30 grain TNT green rounds. You know, uh, with that zero, they hit about a half inch high at 50 yards and about a half inch low at 100 yards. You know, and this has been my key to success with quick shots on really small targets. You know, unless you're in California, the CCI game points 
are the best hunting round I've ever used for hunting with the 22 Magnum. But for those in California, the CCI TNT green ammunition is probably your best option. You know, here's some groups that I shot with different ammo at 90 yards. And you could see there was a very slight, maybe five mile an hour breeze when I shot these. And uh, it drifted most of them off about an inch or two. So that's the, uh, the big drawback to the uh, 22 Magnum is that once you get out past about 80 yards, 75, 80 yards, the wind really starts taking these things. In my opinion, rimfire cartridges like the 22 long rifle, the 17 HMR, and the 22 Magnum are not ethical in any way for long distance hunting. So get that nonsense out of your head. You know, whether I'm hunting with my 22 Magnum or my 17 HMR, I don't shoot at living animals with these cartridges at much over 100 yards. And, you know, I'd never shoot something as large as a coyote with these cartridges at probably much over 60 or 70 yards. So not only is this video about hunting, it's about ethical hunting. You know, all animals, even the ones you don't like, deserve a humane and honorable death. So hunt them ethically. Uh, but for rabbits, squirrels, raccoons, and foxes, the 22 Magnum is just about right in my opinion. And uh, there's Mr. Jackrabbit right there, 22 Magnum. Got the job done today. And uh, I'm gonna put on some uh, rubber gloves and a face mask and get the quarters and back straps off this thing and uh, make them for my dogs. Nothing goes to waste, man. Okay, here, uh, that's the shoot site right here. A lot of fur around, some blood. Here's a blood trail. And uh, there's the bunny right there. So don't discount the 22 Magnum as a hunting cartridge for small game animals. It uh, hits harder than the 17 HMR and doesn't do as much meat damage. You know, ammo is cheap high quality and effective, you know, and you won't notice any increase in recoil over your standard 22 long rifle gun. So what's not to like? In case you haven't noticed, the 22 Magnum is my favorite rimfire cartridge. You know, it strikes that perfect balance between trajectory, downrange energy, and versatility. You know, if I could find one weakness with the 22 Magnum, it would be that it doesn't lend itself to a semi-auto platform very well. But I mostly spot and stock rabbits and squirrels, so a bolt-action rifle is perfectly fine for me. And best of all, during this historic ammunition shortage during this pandemic, my local stores always had plenty of 22 Mag ammunition on the shelves when everything else was out. You know, and often it was the only thing on the shelves. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video about my favorite rimfire hunting cartridge. You can always reach me with any questions or comments at DesertDogOutdoors at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and as always, good hunting.